Hi. Hi. <laughs> Heather Anniker. Krista Feld. Um, we're a collaborative group and we are showing you our gallery um, for our BFA show here. Oh, this is Cal State Long Beach. Yeah, Cal State Long Beach, yeah. And I noticed there are all these shoes out here. Um, are you trying to keep the Gatov Gallery floor really clean? Uh, in some ways, yes. We were presenting um, this show, Dwelling, and we wanted to uh, create a different kind of environment. And by doing so, we we wanted to uh, ask people to kind of make themselves vulnerable in a way, and and then be more aware of of their surroundings and what's going on. Because otherwise, you kind of take things for granted. You walk in and out, and you don't really engage. And we wanted to create a system where that was encouraged. And so here we are. It also sort of adds like a bit of a ceremonial aspect yes. to it. You're removing your shoes, you're entering a space. Yes. And then I think it encouraged these people to spend more time. As yes. You know, it's really amazing how powerful that simple intervention was. I, I came to the uh, Merlino Gallery and then I saw the shoe thing here and I said, oh, that's a hassle. Let me look at the other galleries first. <laughs> yeah. So I, it, it, it repulsed me just a tiny bit for a few minutes. But then when I came back and it's exactly what you said, it's a liminal experience. You go to the trouble to take your shoes off. It's not really any trouble, but it's still somehow it, you have to you have to pause you have for to a, a moment. You have to, to commit. Something. And that's that's where like it's interesting because some people are like, well, I'll have to come back tomorrow. My shoes are too complicated today yes. or something. And it's like, okay, you know, like we'll be here. <laughs> but like it's it's something where I think that's an interesting idea to commit to looking at an artwork instead of just expecting to see it and um, taking it for to granted. walk through a, a big museum and look at every painting for four seconds exactly, yeah. exactly. so well let's go in and look right. okay so um, the space is uh, I should let you describe but it's incredibly rich you've got so many materials on the walls on tables and <laughs> when we started I thought it was going to be a tea kind of thing because we had the cardamom and the anise but um, anyway <laughs> Tell me, what are we looking at? Um, this here is a collection of herbs first and then sawdust that I use in my work. Um, the herbs, I, I put them into pillows and I have like these scents coming out of them. And so when you're spending time, like, you know, just lounging, you have this, this essence coming up and it's, um, it's just kind of comforting and interesting. And so I've been playing around with that. And then, these are all different varieties of wood, um, and so this is uh, this is capable of creating color on material, and and I've been really interested in that lately because I've been working in the wood shop and I see all this sawdust that gets thrown away and it's all these different colors, and I realize that like within my practice people do that, and so right now I'm I'm not trying to pioneer anything really, but I'm testing every material I can get my hands on to see what potential it has. So there's a lot of materials that just get thrown away that have much more potential than you would think. Like pine, for instance, it creates this really rich, bright yellow. And you wouldn't expect that. Pine is such a common wood and people just throw it away and nobody cares. But it has that potential to do something even in its like last little state of materiality. And so these, this is like my experimentation cataloging right here and there's there's lots of different like colors and types like from really rare woods to really common woods and yeah it's it's fun <laughs> um, and then this is our tool wall and we collaborated on this like we, we each contributed our tools to this whole thing and we, we made two objects on this wall like that we use on a daily basis um, so there's, um, this is my work apron, which I, um, like I basically created a pocket for all the tools that I use within my fiber practice. And it's like beginning to get this like work patina on it. And I feel like, you know, once it's all really good and dirty, that's when the object is done. But right now it's sort of like a work in progress and I'm continuing to use it. And I, most of the stains on there are from dyes, but also from other materials I've been working with. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and this, these are like more of our tools. Um, and then this, this is like a little contribution from our grandmothers. This was my grandmother's sewing kit, and this was her grandmother's sewing 
machine and um, it's just like a little homage to our heritage in, in making and and um, these are both objects that we still use yes. on a regular basis yes. as well that are just like a part of our lives yeah so you know we 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 think and we suffer and struggle so much of that, that distinction between craft and fine art and, mm -hmm. and it seems like you're maybe dissolving that line. We're a trying bit. to. We're trying to to give give um, fiber specifically, obviously, you know the the appreciation that it deserves because it's definitely taken for granted. And I think a part of that is just the industrial revolution. Um, you know, yeah, it's sort just of like changing everything. We're learning outmoded technologies, yes. and then. What is the so big? the Industrial Revolution marginalized the high quality stuff and gave us a taste for mass produced crap. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And then we don't appreciate anything. Like, even the mass produced crap is labored over, but no. Yeah, we knows. have no concept of, of what that means to yeah. you know turn raw material into yeah. a utilitarian it, it, except object. Except every now and then when people want to commit suicide on the roof of iPod City and yeah. Right. <laughs> That's maybe another story, but okay, <laughs> let's keep going. Yeah. Um, right here, this is our little, like, uh, This is our dye. work table. Yeah, yeah, our work table. We're, we're doing natural dyes, mm -hmm. which will be ready later today, but we've got, and this is all food products, like we have carrot tops, purple cabbage, and uh, like red and brown onions that we're going to be dyeing with, mm -hmm. and then this is some of Krista's sawdust. This is an ebony sawdust that, um, I've been working with. So we're going to be like, I've been spinning yarn and we're going to be dyeing that and then the idea is we'll, tomorrow we'll start making that into something. Yes. So it's not just an exhibition, it's a residency. <laughs> yeah. Residency, definitely. <laughs> we were joking, like, occupy Gatov. <laughs> you know? Yeah. We're not leaving today for yeah. <laughs> we, we like it here. <laughs> it's nice to have the space. Um, this here is a tapestry loom that was um, one of the belongings of Judy Chicago's studio and we were donated this and I've been spending a lot of time with this object lately just to make some of my work and so we decided to put it in the show. I'm currently warping it so that I can weave with it in here so that people can see the act of weaving and understand what that is and why that is and how things are made and like they can actually see the process of me making my own work um which yeah, they can take or leave but yeah <laughs> um do you want to talk about your room yeah yeah so this is a structure that i built um this is a flat packing um room that's like specific to my my dimensions and and like my needs my space that i have available at home and i i've been currently just like moving all the time and trying to find a home and and i wanted to create a piece of furniture that would always resemble what i needed and what i wanted but be able to be versatile and i mean like lately I've been very frustrated with like large objects. So this is your transportable room? Yes. Wow. Yes. I like, I decided to not have a bed anymore. So I created this like tatami mat surface with these kind of walls and shelving so that I could have like just the basic essentials of what I needed in terms of just like my own personal space. And then I, I'll, I'll always have that and I don't have to worry about um, other pieces of furniture that are just mass produced and boring and obnoxious <laughs> IKEA furniture. You know, in, in, in George Carlin's sort of famous monologue on stuff, uh -huh. uh, where I think he coins uh -huh. the idea of, of my stuff and your shit, uh -huh. um, yeah. but he also talks about traveling and how as you keep going, you you pare down to ever more essentials, like yes. how much stuff do you need to take a trip? Yes. What if you take a day trip to another even more remote location? And yeah. and so you've kind of pared down yeah. to the portable room. Yes, definitely. And I mean, like even within it, like I still have stuff that I don't necessarily need, but these are just a lot of objects that I find inspiring, things that I, I like to have in my life that are like, you know, just 
giving me joy and um, they're just interesting they're they're personal and so I, I wanted to show that here um, and um, right over here next to the, the tapestry then we also have all the yarns that I dyed with natural materials um, this is all derived from plants from wood and it's um, it's amazing like the color potential that it has because it it's usually just you know like I said before thrown away and here it is it's real <laughs> um, in this back corner this is a backpack that I made for myself <laughs> it's like this crazy kind of like furry Ewok thing and it's 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 pretty crazy to wear it around I like to travel with this a lot I call this one ambassador and I love to take it on airplanes and have people look at me weird because it's like the strangest form of luggage <laughs> um, and then this is a pomegranate tree that I've been growing for five and a half years now from like a little baby seed and it's it's also like a travel companion kind of like a pet that I keep with me and and live like right next to have a proximity with and it's kind of like this symbolic um, nature form of, of my adult life, of like me becoming something and like going through these super awkward stages and, and then just like continuing to grow despite everything and, and changing constantly and going through seasons. And so it just kind of reminds me of like what I'm coming from and it's okay that I'm like at this point in my life because that's where I am and I can't change that. And, I have to be content. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> and then this piece right here, this is a large uh, scrim that was part of a performance that I did. And this is basically like the aftermath, the byproduct of it. Um, and this is, this is like a personal piece, this is about my family. This was an old family quilt that was falling apart that I turned into a sculpture and I performed with it. And then I took what was left, I like took all these little scraps and I started sewing them onto the scrim that was separating me from the audience. And so it was like bringing the space into a new, um, into like a new presence and a new feel. And, and then this, this object was created from that. And yeah, and I, I like to have it in my life. It reminds me of like my family and my past. And, and it's now like this new thing that's transformed. And Heather okay. is in here. <laughs> so this is my um, personal space within the gallery. And um, probably, I mean, the oddest piece in here, I guess, would be this pod that I wove. And this I made after living for a while without chairs. I realized how sort of necessary they are for just like having a place to sit and not just on a countertop or the floor is really nice and refreshing. <laughs> so I wanted to have a chair that this like collapses and folds up and I can take it with me. And also it's just sort of like this like isolation chamber in a way or like just a place for like it like feels like a hug or being nurtured or just like almost like yeah just kind of going back to like a safe and contained place so a, lo a lot of people have been getting inside of it which has been an interesting experience <laughs> like, go ahead give it a try okay um it's snug but it kind of works best when you um just kind of <laughs> Go into it. But <laughs> so, so this is my pod. Um, I should really spend. I need to spend some more time in here. It's pretty nice. There, there were a few, a few women that that have gone in that and said they didn't want to come out, and yes. so I just kind of left them in there for a while. <laughs> it's interesting. Um, this corner is. Like my, um, it's like my inspiration wall and table, and these are images that I curated in that were from my walls at home, or just things that I've been gathering, like accumulating, and just kind of like 
Oh, that's my candied ginger. You can have a piece, <laughs> sort of like a, a bit of an addiction. But I left it there as an offering. So like you take the time to look at all these strange little things, and then there's, then you, there's your reward. <laughs> but, but yeah, a lot of images just, I mean, things that are inspiring to me. Kind of like over here is more like the lifestyle corner of like what I'm working towards. This kind of like, I don't know, magical nomadic experience of living. But. Um, We'll see about that. Um, this here, I mean, this is a, a hanging closet. <laughs> that um, there's just a few pieces that that I made on here. I, I thought it was a grappling hook, but, but <laughs> it I, could I, be I a come to realize it's <laughs> it a closet. It could be a grappling. Hook. <laughs> I think mean, these are pieces that I wove, and this is a, a belt that I sewed, and these are things that I wear and live with, and that I spent a long time making, and then and then the, those are a pair of shoes that I made, and. I don't recommend shoemaking for anybody who wants immediacy. This took me a really long time <laughs> to actually finish a pair of shoes. And I mean, just making the shell is one thing, and then putting the soles on was this whole other experience. And many instructional videos later, I <laughs> felt like I had it, and then finally, you know, completed them. And I've worn them, and I like wearing them, but it takes a particular sort of outfit for those specific shoes. And then, I mean, this is, this is like my meditative space. There's um, this blanket I made out of all naturally dyed fabrics. And then this this piece here is just like a, a altar that I made for holding like, these different crystals and things that I have accumulated or that were given to me. And they're just sort of like things that I consider very kind of like precious in a way. So. That's my, oh, and then this, this last piece here. This is a, a weaving that I spent an extremely long time on. Um, I did this process called sumac, which is putting all these different knots into it. So, I mean, I think I clocked myself at about one inch per hour. So, <laughs> I mean, I got a little faster, I think, towards the end, but it, there's a lot, a lot of time invested in this and, um, the, the warp, I painted tea onto it when I was weaving it, so that's where that stain is coming from. And then at the very bottom, that's rust from my loom, which I thought the loom left its own imprint on it, which was interesting to me. Um, and then I guess going over... The food part. Into the kitchen. The kitchen. <laughs> so this is, this is our kitchen, and... Um, this, I, I, made, I made this in my wood class. This is a portable kitchen, and this table can fold down, and that can push in, so it kind of compresses into a kitchen island, or it expands out into what we're using it for, our cooking area. And then we've been preparing lunch every day, which whoever happens to wander into the gallery from 12.30 till whenever we're out of lunch can help themselves to a bowl that we made these little ceramic vessels and spoons and so we just have people pick out a bowl and a spoon apparently and each named after yeah. an <laughs> art professor a mythological character or yeah. yeah somebody from pop culture yeah so all our spoons have different names um, and then our, our bowls some of them have like little sort of words in them it's sort of like a fortune cookie you get a little something <laughs> Here's our, our dirty dishes. So that's how many people we served lunch to today. Um. I already forgot what I ate, but boy, it was really good. <laughs> this is dal, and this is kitchari, mm -hmm. and they're both Indian dishes. Mm -hmm. And they're very like um, simple and economical to make, and um, it's very convenient that they are made in these devices, which save us lots of time and energy and trouble. <laughs> And so this is kind of what we live off yeah, this is what we live during off the of, semester. Yes. We have these going like in the studio yeah. and then so we thought we would share that experience. Yeah. Like this is this is the fiber meal plan. Yes. <laughs> so the the being in the gallery makes it seem kind of unique and special and, and the 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 white cube mm -hmm. gives us sort of an emphasis on everything mm -hmm. and uh, but this is much more every day for you or Yes. Is yes. this every day, every day, or I is this kind of heightened every day? Like, we 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 eat together all the time. Like yeah. there's there's a constant need for sustenance. We're here and long hours. We're here so. long hours. 
<laughs> and there's no good food on campus. Yes, so we, yes. we had to make alternative means by yes. like creating our own food. Adjusting. Which, which leads to a very funny part of our show, the food file, <laughs> which uh, upstairs in Fibers, there's a filing cabinet that is archaic and like never used. And so we turned it into like- We this, took it over. This uh, compartment for foods and we just have Lots like our dishes, our spices, yeah. and this is this is our little <laughs> like our, our little squirrel hole. cupboard slash refrigerator <laughs> thing, and it's just it it cracks us up. That so do, <laughs> do do all fiber artists have such an organic diet and way of life? Or are there fiber artists who eat Not you know candy bars and hot dogs? Uh, definitely, <laughs> definitely, definitely. Okay, so this is just your way of yeah. I mean, this of is art and of, life. Yeah, yeah, this is like the ideal that we're working towards, yeah. and and I mean it's. Like you build it incrementally, like mm -hmm. we've been kind of moving along this path, and then this is sort of like a culmination of like where we are and also where we want to be, yeah. like within the space, and then I mean it'll just keep evolving from there. Yeah. Congratulations! Thank you. It's an incredible installation. Thank you. Thanks.